and welcome to the Word of Truth, the Sunday School Class of the Air with your teacher, Rod Payne. The Word of Truth. Hello and welcome again to the Word of Truth. Thank you for joining us on whatever day you're joining us, at whatever time of the day you join us. I do appreciate hearing from anyone who stops me at a grocery store or at a, a you know, a retirement center or something like that, tells me that they watch the program. I always appreciate it. It's never a bother. Thank you so much to everyone who does so. And thank you for those, or thank you to those who write us, or write us and tell us that you're encouraging or you want to encourage us. And those of you who are letting us pray for you, thank you so much to you as well. We're going to put that address on the screen right now here at the top of the program because we do want to pray for you. And I'm not speaking about me as a we in the royal sense. I'm talking about the team here at the Word of Truth. There are some faithful folks that are behind the scenes at this program. I'm just the guy who sits out front. I could not do this program by myself. Trust me when I tell you that. If you'd like to write to us, encourage us or let us know how we can encourage or pray for you. The address is on the screen, the Word of Truth, 1200 9th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas, and our zip code is 76301. That address again is the Word of Truth, 1200 9th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas, and our zip code is 76301. We would love to hear from you. If you have a birthday anywhere near the end of the month of February, happy birthday to you. If you're celebrating an anniversary, that's a happy one. Happy anniversary of whatever nature that is. If, as I always say, on the other hand, this time that the year uh, is commemorative for you because of the loss of someone, please remember, since you're both believers, and I'm going to trust that that was the case with your lost loved one, there will be a great and glorious reunion one day. And we'll be like those that were described in last week's lesson here on the Word of Truth from Daniel. We'll be in that tens of tens of tens of thousands Surrounding the throne, singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So I pray that you can have that as a peace in your heart. Jesus said, I've come that you might have peace, that you might have joy. I pray that for everyone watching this program. I know for me, yes, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes that's a struggle, but I have to determine that I'm going to take God's peace, Christ's joy, in my heart, regardless of the circumstances that are around me. And I know that, uh, like our family, many of you have suffered loss in this last year, have suffered um, loss of friends, uh, uh, difficulties with this virus and all these things uh, going on, the economy and the upside-down supply chain and things of this nature. I know that. But I believe the Word of God tells us, in fact, today's passage tells us, we can know who's in control and we can trust Him. We can trust Him. Daniel is to say today, yes, we have messed up. Down through our history as a nation in our relationship to you, Heavenly Father, we've messed up. But please extend to us your grace. I, I like what he says. I don't know that... Uh, theologically, uh, everything in God's Word obviously is true, but I don't know that this is a theologically sound principle on which to base our relationship with God, but it's uh, used on more than one occasion, the Word of God. Heavenly Father, don't destroy your people because we're known by your name. So, in all sincerity, as a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, again, I don't know if this is a theologically strong plank on which to base my foundational faith, but I do want God to preserve His people because we are a people called by His name. If His people, His Word says, who are called by His name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then in heaven, as He is here on earth, if I could add, and I don't add to the Scripture, but in heaven, he hears us. He will hear our cry. Well, the word of God says, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's with us right now. He's with you. He's with me. And there's some of you watching this program today that need to hear this. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. I feel very impressed to say this. You are not alone. 
And Jesus is right there with you right now. That's the promise from his word regarding his presence. That's the promise regarding his presence in our here and now. Okay. Well, we are in Daniel and we're finishing up our study in the book of Daniel uh, today. So I hope that it's been, as I said last week, as rich a study for you as it's been for me. Next week, we start our study in 1 Thessalonians. And I know it's going to be just amazing because God is going to use his word to impart an awful lot of truth to us. It's almost like drinking from a fire hose uh, when you're in your study of Thessalonians. So I hope that you'll be with us next week. But I don't want to run ahead because today... Today mirrors a wonderful old adage, which is true. Confession is good for the soul. Confession, this is not an original thought with me. This is as old as the ages. Confession is good for the soul. I don't know how many of you watching this program know what I refer to often as the 12 steps. By the way, when done in the correct way, Right out of the Word of God, they're the strongest form of discipleship I have ever seen. Now, I'm not talking about someone who says, well, God is a good orderly direction or just whatever I think. No. Those 12 steps, you can find Scripture. Every one of them comes from a, a Scripture. And when done in programs like Regen or uh, Hunger for Healing or, or uh, Celebrate Recovery, something like that, or just when done in a, a Bible study, you'll find them to be an incredible form of discipleship. The fourth step says that basically we take a searching, fearless, moral inventory of ourselves. In other words, we write down what's good and bad in our lives. And the fifth step is we confess. The sixth step, we ask God, we, we, we acknowledge before God all of our defects in our character, in our lives. And that seventh step is we humbly ask God to remove these things from our lives. That's right out of God's Word. Now, I'll grant you that they've been apprehended by some folks who just say that, uh, you know, God is anything that you want to make Him as you understand Him. And I'm not denouncing that because in all sincerity, I've, know, I've known people personally, and I know there are many hundreds of thousands, if not maybe more, millions of people who have gotten free from addiction, from alcoholism, by using those programs. So praise God. But I'm just saying... God is God. He is Jehovah. And His Son is Jesus Christ. But in those steps that I just enumerated for you, we find confession is the central, illuminating part. What Daniel's going to be saying today to his Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, and conversely, if we can insert ourselves into this passage we can see that same need in our own lives. And the body of Christ, I'm going to tell you right now, I need it. I need it and I regularly do it. I regularly do it because I need, if the word says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But if we say we have no sin, we're messed up. Okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But if we say, as the word says, that we have no sin, We've missed it. We've missed it. Daniel today is basically going to say, I've got it. We've got it as a people group. Please forgive us. Now, your quarterly actually begins in verse 4, but I think it's imperative that we back up a little bit to verse 1. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, I understood these things, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. And he's begun, as your quarterly correctly points out, to do the math. And there's others around him who have been doing the same. And they're seeing in their mind that the end of this 70 is upon them. It's not far from now. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition. We don't just ask him for things. There is petition, but we also entreat him. We also plead with him. We also confess before him with prayer and petition and fast, fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Boy, back in January, I was in a men's Bible study working on the book of Esther. And 
we were talking about Mordecai. Remember the guy who adopts basically Esther into his household and then Esther becomes the queen's, I mean, she becomes the king's queen. And then she learns through Mordecai that there's been by the evil Haman, a directive issued to all the provinces of the Medes and the Persians, which basically says, which basically says, destroy all the Jews on this certain date. And what happens? They go before God and later they go before the king. But they in sackcloth and ashes, what do these mean? Body of Christ, it basically means we divest ourselves. We don't just rend our outer garments. As the word says, we rend our hearts. We repent all the way down to our innermost being. I repent all the way down to my innermost being. So there they were. There is Daniel, and he's in fasting. He's doing without so that he can direct all of his attention on his relationship with God and his petition before God. He's in sackcloth, and finally, he's in ashes. Ashes was a way of deportment. It was a methodology of portrayal that said, I am in deep mourning. I am in deep sorrow. When something was burned and it was reduced to ashes, there was virtually nothing left and it was scattered with the wind. And he says, I'm in these, in this state, I, I humbly come before God. I prayed to the Lord, my God and confessed in IV translation. I don't know what it says in yours, but it should say something similar. I prayed verse four, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. And now listen to this confession. Oh Lord, the great and awesome God. He acknowledges first, and by the way, this is a model for prayer of confession. He acknowledges first the sovereignty of God. Oh Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. He keeps his promises. Unlike, boy, you know, we used to see these bank ads on television all the time and your investments are fully, your deposits are fully covered by the FDIC. You know, well, I don't know how good any of that is anymore as, as rapidly as our nation seems to print almost virtually worthless paper money. I don't know how much real, you know, silver, gold, whatever you want to say is stockpiled within the confines of our uh, nation's repositories that actually guarantees that that currency has any value. And given the inflationary rate that we've already experienced this early, here two months, almost to the end of two months in the year 2022, given inflation, yeah. But this we can count on. God keeps his promises. When God makes a covenant, and by the way, that's, a covenant is what Jesus Christ established when he is that new covenant. He died on the cross, was buried, rose again. That's a covenant. That's an agreement for everyone who accepts Christ. He says, we have sinned collectively, but him individually as well. Verse five, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked. And listen to these descriptions. We've been wicked. Mm -mm -mm. We've rebelled, your quarterly numbers and for you too. We have turned away from your commands and your laws. We have been all of these things. We've not listened to your prophets, your servants, who spoke in the name of our, to, to, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. We've done all these things and he enumerates them. But if we can bring it all down to one thing, we've sinned, Okay. We're going, you know, we're finishing the month of February and we've been talking about awaken around our church. And now the month of March is, is to really, uh, you know, fully experience all these things. And, and uh, hopefully we see a tremendous revival in the city of Wichita Falls. But we don't see revival without confession and prayer. We don't truly see go down through the history of revivals in the history of man's relationship to God. Time and time again, you'll see them preceded by fervent prayer and confession of sin. Daniel says, all this stuff we've done. Verse 7, Lord, you are righteous. Now, he began his prayer 
by acknowledging God for his sovereignty, now he acknowledges his righteousness. Lord, you are righteous. Conversely, the word but is inserted here, but this day we are covered with shame. The men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, and in all the countries where you scatter us because of our unfaithfulness to you. The dispersia, as we call it, the captivity, Daniel says it, other prophets have as well. It's because of our sin. Now, today, you may be watching this program and you're captive to something, okay? Maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's narcotics, drugs, maybe it's uh, sex outside of marriage, whatever it is that you're captive to, you don't have to remain a captive. But to see freedom, you have to acknowledge the captivity, okay? If you continue to live in the kind of uh, uh, made-up world that you may have fashioned in order to somehow or another give yourself leave or, or, or just grant yourself the okay to continue, Paul said to the, you know, the church, the early church, should we keep practicing sin? No. If you're a captive today, in order to experience true freedom, you have to acknowledge that you're a captive first, Okay. Because if you keep believing that, oh, everything's going okay. Yeah, I, I don't do always the right thing, but at least, no, no, no. Me too. Me too. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. Me too. I have to acknowledge when something or, 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 or some entity is trying to take my joy and my relationship with God and replace it was something that's against his word, against his commands, against his principles, his precepts. I have to acknowledge that because that's captivity. And Daniel says here, the reason that we've been scattered all around the world is because of our unfaithfulness to you. Oh Lord, verse 8, we and our kings and our princes, our fathers are covered with, and here's the word again, shame. Okay? If I'm not ashamed of my sin and I don't ask him to forgive me of it, I can't be forgiven, okay? The blood of Christ forgives me and cleanses me of all unrighteousness, but I have to acknowledge it. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth that he's been raised from the dead, you will be saved. Pardon me, I have to confess. I have to confess. We are covered with shame because we've sinned against you. Verse 9, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving. Have we, have you, have I, have we collectively begun to notice these attributes of God? Verse, verse 4, earlier in the passage, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love. Then verse 8, O Lord, uh, we are covered with shame. Uh, Lord, rather, I'm very, sorry, verse 7, Lord, you are righteous. Okay, so he's great, awesome, keeps his, keeps his promises. He's righteous, and here he is, verse 9, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The beginning of that prayer, the Lord's Prayer we call it, the beginning of that prayer acknowledges God for who he is. We are to do that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. We are to acknowledge God for who he is. He is not the temporal God of whoever's popular. He is not the temporal God of whatever the polls say. He is not the temporal God of making sure we placate the masses so that we can continue to reign and rule in government or the halls or the quarters of power. He's God and he's sovereign. You're merciful and forgiving, even though we've rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants and prophets. Down through the annals of time, God has always made himself known, made himself manifest. And often he did it directly to the individual. But often he used his prophets. He spoke the word to his prophets. And the prophets then in turn shared the word with the people. Body of Christ, we're blessed when we hear his word. We're blessed even more when we obey his word. We're blessed 
in that covenant with him. Daniel says, down through the ages, we've had time and time again the opportunity to listen to what you have to say and to obey what you have to say, and yet we've not followed what you had to say. All Israel, verse 11, has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. All. He's all-inclusive here with that one phrase. All Israel, verse 11, has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. The blessing... Yes, yeah, that falls obedience. But the curses and sworn judgment, that's the return for disobedience. Body of Christ, this isn't me sitting in judgment. This isn't me saying, here's how it better work. This is God's word saying, when we follow what he tells us to do, when we obey his principles, his precepts, when we cling faithfully, to his promises and his word and obey him as children. There is a promise. There are promises implicit with that obedience. But when we choose to disobey and when we choose to rebel, there are consequences. And the only way any of us, you, me, anyone, the only way any of us escape those consequences is through salvation by Jesus Christ. It's the only way. There is no other way, not, not chanting a million times whatever chant you want to chant, not following the so-called wisdom of the Buddha, not uh, believing that you get to be God when you grow up, as is the fallacy of the, the heresy of the, uh, the thought of the born. No, the only way is through Jesus Christ. Therefore, first, oh my, therefore the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses have been poured out on us because we've sinned against you. Verse 12, you have fulfilled the word spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us great disaster. And boy, that's an understatement, okay? He, he, he's not always given to brevity, uh, but this is an understatement. Great disaster doesn't even begin to describe all the things that have transpired in the nation and to the nation. The divided kingdom and yes, both sides no, no. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Why? Because Jerusalem was his chosen city. Is, not was, is his chosen city. We're told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and look at the destruction that's already befallen it and the destruction that's to come. The very fact that the Dome of the Rock exists today and what should be Temple Square, it's, it's blasphemy. Just as it is written, verse 13, in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we haven't obeyed him. How many times do we suffer because of our sin, and we say, Oh, this is terrible, but not I should confess my sin, ask for forgiveness, and then move forward as God gives me opportunity. No. And the whole nation of Israel did the same thing time and time again. Verse 15, now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong. Confessing, confessing, confessing. He's not going to let it go. We can't let it go. Because only when we give it to him is it gone. When we confess, as I've already said, as his word says, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, cleanses us of all unrighteousness. But it takes that confession. Verse 16, O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, keeps describing him here. Turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. 
Our sins and the iniquities of our fathers have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. You were supposed to be the chosen ones, the children of God. And yet look at what has happened to you now. You were supposed to be the ones, but Around the globe, you're virtually held up to scorn and ridicule and shame. Oh, body of Christ. We got to continue. We got to continue. Our sins and our iniquities, they've brought us. They've brought it all to us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant for your sake. It's not so much I'm just asking for me, he says. I'm asking for you, too. Again, I don't know if this is a strong theological plank on which to base our relationship with God, but I do know that it happens more than one time in the Scripture. For your sake, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, verse 18, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous. No, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Listen to how he proceeds. And listen, he says, forgive, hear and act. For your sake, for our sake, because we bear your name. Body of Christ, if ever a nation in addition to Israel, needs to pray this prayer right now, I confess to you that I am part of the problem and I need to be praying more diligently and much more often. First off, obviously for my personal forgiveness, but secondly, for the forgiveness of our nation, a nation that passed a law all those years ago that allowed legalized abortion to the point where in some states they're literally wanting to do it right up to the day of, of birth almost. And for all these other things, for making what's wrong look right and for making what's right look wrong. Daniel, like we says, like we should say, says, forgive us. Please forgive us because we bear your name. As Christians, we bear his name. Well, I hope this study, as I said, has been as rich for you as it has been for me. It's been very convicting to me, and I've really appreciated the time we've spent together. If you'd like to write to us, the address is on the screen, the Word of Truth, 1200 Ninth Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. Our zip code is 76301. That address, again, is the Word of Truth, 1200 Ninth Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. Our zip code is 76301. We'll be in the New Testament next week, and I hope you'll join us as we begin a new quarter and a new month, the month of March, right here on The Word of Truth. You've been watching The Word of Truth from First Baptist Church, Wichita Falls. Join us again next week for The Word of Truth.